Good afternoon, we're out here after work, so we don't have a ton of daylight, but plan is to put in uh, 8221-5838. This is the Mopar Puck system for fifth wheel hitch. Um, this should be the same for 2014 to 22 plus <coughs> um, installation. Um, I'm going to unbox this. Some of the stuff I read ahead online, you need a... The instructions call for a three and three quarter hole saw. A lot of the instructions say three and five eighths or even three and a half is more than uh, big enough holes. So I went, I got a three and five eighths just in case I could get by with a smaller hole. Um, obviously a drill. Um, and then just an assortment of 18s like sockets and I got a, yeah, just 18 millimeters to see what I, what's going to work best for me. And then, uh, yeah. I'm trying, I've been reading online that you don't have to take apart um, as much as instructions say. So I'm going to try to do it with, uh, I dropped the tire. You need to get the kit out from underneath your passenger seat. Um, use, a, use the tubing to drop your spare tire. Other than dropping the spare tire, I'm going to try to get this kit installed um, without taking anything else apart. So... See if I can set you down here. Let's open up the kit. So this one kit comes with your uh, front left and front right cast mount brackets that bolt to the frame and then your rear cast brackets let's get these out of the way your rear so our rear cast brackets that go above the frame because the rear of the frame on the 2500s is narrower than the front so these actually bolt on the inside of the frame on the front and then these use use these plates to go directly above the frame in the rear. Um, it comes with a bag of hardware and goodies. And that's it. So in the bag, we get Uh, front and rear covers. I think the covers are the same, but these are different because they're. this is what goes in the holes when you don't have a fifth wheel hitch in. Um, they're different size, like the rears have a bigger mount than the, than the front. So that's the only front to back with the rubber parts. Get those out of the way. And then you get all the hardware. Um, I have a blue stick of uh, Loctite that I'm going to use. It doesn't call for anything. It does, okay. It doesn't call for any um, Loctite on the installation. Um, it does come with a very smashed up set of instructions. Um, which is fine, they're readable. Um, it just tells you where to cut the holes in the assembly process. Um, that yeah i'm gonna try to whip through this to get as quick a time not quickest time obviously just to get a decent time to see how long it actually takes so i'll get at it so if you want to um kind of lay this out before you climb underneath with both um you can see the left hand mount has the pin on the more right side, so this would be the left, that'd be the right, based off this pin right here. Um, on the fronts, it's the so it's it's the shorter side must must go rearward, but yeah, there we go. So that'd be the this would be the right side, and then this would be the left side. So I'm starting with the easy side. <laughs> Because it's nice to get winds out the gate, but this is the right 
front corner. Um, it's just got two bolts. The bolts are right there. Um, they're out of the kit. I just put them in for showing you how it looks. So there's a front mount installed. Uh, metric bolts, M18 socket. You tighten these metric bolts to 90 American foot-pounds. <laughs> I'll go try a rear one now. So the rear, you can see part of it from the outside. Here is the two bolts, because it uh, uses these sandwich plates um, to go like this. So the mount itself sneaks up in here. Ah, that's the part I was wondering about. It says you have to lift the bed, uh, but it is, it is quarters of an inch from fitting. If that peg would go in, I might try from the inside. Okay, so if you pop it just a little bit with something, this side will go in. Hopefully we have the same success with the other side, but I'm gonna bolt this up and uh, show you what it looks like all bolted up here. Okay, so, oops, sorry light uh so here's our um hardware that you can see i just snugged up the other hardware is up through here it does talking about wanting to drop this but i think with a, if i hold my tongue right i'll get by without dropping it yeah there it is without dropping this heat shield um i will give it an attempt and let you guys know okay so I put the back left one in. Um, I was able to get the back right one in with the exhaust shielding in place. Um, it's kind of a PETA. Uh, if you have a rattle gun handy, I would, it's 50-50 whether or not that uh, exhaust shielding, I guess I could point at it. The exhaust shielding around the tire needs to come off. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's quicker to leave it on or off. This side is back, back left, like I said, by far the easiest. Um, the only thing I added to our stuff is a uh, tool socket and a Milwaukee M18 3.8 because every bolt's about that much longer than it needs to be. So I was doing it by hand and that just takes too long. So I'm going to go try the one on front of the fuel tank and uh, we'll see how that goes. This is the front left one uh, by the fuel tank. It's really not as bad as they say it is online. Um, not a whole lot of special. It's just a two bolt one. Um, if you take it and you feed it from in front of the tank, and then feed it back around this harnessing and then go back forward and then just thread the bolts in by hand. Um, that one that harnessing is in the way a little bit and it wants a grip on it so it stinks a little bit but other than that yeah every all the hardware on here is uh 90 90 foot pounds that's all 18 millimeter um i'm gonna go drill some holes now so it went pretty good the pilot hole that i measured with using the the measurements in the um instructions they be 24 and a quarter um i use a straight edge down here to measure off the ribs like it says it was about a quarter inch too far so i looked underneath and got it more centered um this is the three and five eighths bit so obviously you'd have more space on this side yet if you had the three and three quarters but this is enough because this is thin um you just gotta get this lip to click into a little piece in the collar um 
it would have been really uneventful except for right off the rip like as soon as i started the first like two seconds in the uh drill bit that comes with the bosch quick lock deal for the hole saw snapped um that's why you see some of this stuff going on but i got touch up paint and we'll touch it up on a warmer day when it's and uh it's mostly going to be underneath this cover anyways so i'm gonna get the other four uh drilled and then uh let you guys know how long it took and kind of go over everything so here we got it it is 7 12 and i started at uh 5 30 just around 5 30 maybe a couple minutes before so call it call it an hour 45 to put these in um if you're doing it any time of the year that it's actually summer uh, you'd probably still have light but it's february here so and we're picking up camper this weekend so i need to get the need to get these installed but it's about an hour 45 um the fronts i cheated i didn't even measure um you can get to both sides um from underneath with a drill bit so i came up from underneath sorry about that guys uh, a battery ran out but so like I was saying I cheated on the fronts you can get to both sides even the side with the fuel tank from underneath and drill your pilot hole this way that way you don't even have to measure guess or whatever you could just go and then uh, run the um, hole saw from the top I did already shot back the bed as I was going um, so I had that to the tool list get a shot back or bring one out with you Get, get rid of all the stuff um so like i was saying i already shot backed out the back um i have this little dewalt guy i do have 10 to 15 minutes of cleaning up stuff yet to go so call it a two-hour job that's all you need to put these pucks in